Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and I make coding videos. And in today's video, we are talking about bundlers. What are bundlers? Bundlers are really fun to learn once you have mastered the tech stack. And this is one thing which everybody asks, hey, I know React, hey, I know Angular, what should I learn next? The next obvious topic to learn or deep dive are bundlers. They are so much awesome and they are always on the cutting edge. The all hype that you see around Rust and all these languages, all these hypes are actually being implemented in the real world in these bundlers and they are always evolving. That's why I find them always fascinating because they are always working on, always growing and something new is happening in them. But your obvious question is, what is even a bundler? Don't you worry, I will walk you through about what is a bundler, what it does behind the scene in the React, Angular, Vue or any other JavaScript framework, what are the most popular ones, what are the pros and cons of it, where their websites are, which one is popular right now and so many questions around that. I know you're excited because I am also very much for this. We have all prepared notes. We are going to have fun in this video. Let me take you onto the screen and walk you through with this one. So before we go and walk you through, first of all, a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Swella. They are now my one of the favorite hosting services, especially for the databases. And they're offering $50 credits and you can get a little bit more if you check the link in the description below. I will come back onto them uh, in a minute. First of all, let's first address what are the bundlers. So here are our notes, which we are going to talk about. We will talk about the bundlers, what they are. We will understand the pros and cons and one word highlight about each bundler. So we'll talk about Webpack, we'll talk about Parcel, ES build. We'll also talk about a combination of ES build plus rollup, which is wheat. And then we'll have some of the final notes here as well. So a lot of preparation has been done in this video. The first obvious thing is let's talk about what is even a bundler. In order to understand what is a bundler, I found that the Webpack is one of the best way to get started, at least to explore what is a, what is a bundler. And when you go onto their website, on the very homepage, the hero image tells you exactly what a bundler is. You write your JavaScript code in a lot of code files. Even in the React ecosystem, if I just go and look into this, you don't write your code just in one file. You have multiple of these files. There's app.js, there's a header.js, there is some XYZ JSX. Then there are configuration files and so many of these files. Apart from them, there are static assets. There are assets like uh, there are images, there are CSS files and a whole bunch of things. But as long as you remember, JavaScript doesn't understand thousand files of JavaScript. They understand just one or hardly two or three of the files. And this is exactly what a Webpack does. If you notice here, all your JS file or your all of your handbrake uh, uh, files, HBS, not handbrake, but it's also one of the things. There are mustache and handbrake and all of them. There's CJS, SAS. So all of these files, modules, dependency, whatever is there, what Webpack does it actually bundles them up and try to make it as optimized as possible, not only just optimize as much as backward compatible as it can make. And it doesn't just include the JS file, it also includes your JPEG, your PNGs, your CSS file. And I don't think so anybody else described this more than more beautifully than this diagram. So this is what we have. So notice here, this is your code. And when you bundle it, it not only bundles you, it actually allows you to have some configurations as well. Like how do you want the bundling to happen? Because not just the bundling happen, a lot of tree shaking happens. Tree shaking simply means the code which you are not using, but still is there in your code files, maybe some unused imports or something. It just removes them down. It does a lot of more such things. And that's why it is there. Look at the sponsors of Webpack, not mine, mine is Swella, but you can see them. The latest sponsor, the platinum sponsor, the gold sponsor, the silver sponsor, the bronze sponsors, and the backers as well. This proves that how important this technology is. Don't get jealous about the sponsors, just look at this, how valuable this tech and this piece of code is that so many people are backing it down. Another beautiful thing about the Webpack is their documentation. This is a gold mine right in front of your eyes. They have written it so nicely and especially their concept part, it helped me for the first time when I was working on, especially when I studied the concept of loaders. This is my favorite part of the entire documentation. They have a lot of plugins and everything. So now we'll talk about some of these. Now that you know about the bundlers, we'll talk about uh, what are the pros, what are the cons, and how do I categorize them in just the one word. And before moving there, another quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. 
So you might have seen a lot of hosting in the past. Uh, there are lots of competitions in the hosting ecosystem. But I found that some of the people, if, I, if they can get hosting which is reliable and don't have that kind of an unpredictable plan, I love them. Absolutely. Give me exactly what I'm going to cost. And this is where the sponsor of this video comes in, which is Swella. So I'll just walk you through. This is their website. And if you look at this, whether you want to host fast API, whether you want to host a Node.js project, Next.js, Nest.js, React, anything that you want to host, they just work. And again, as I mentioned, my favorite part is their database hosting. If I look at the dashboard, I do have a database still up and running. Just costed me $2. I already have $50 in my account. It's already up and running. I can just go ahead and quickly see that what's happening with this database, how they are, how many apps are connected, what are the details and all these things. So it's pretty nice to have this kind of a thing available to me. If you want to have your database, just click on add service. What do you want to add? Database, just click on add and simply have your own Redis. Maybe you're building an application which requires a caching, just select this, and you know the predictable pricing whichever is going to have. They start with just the $5, but as you add more credits, you can have $34, $65, whichever you want to pick. And it is that easy to maintain and all of that. Not only that, they also give you the recovery options and point in time, whatever you need, they have this. They also have this object storage. So go ahead, check them out. The link is in the description section. I am using them now in my production as well. The hosting is pretty fantastic and hope you enjoyed that. Check in the link in the description as well. Now, coming back onto the Webpack. So what's the Webpack? My three bits on the Webpack is it's extremely powerful and customizable. You have to dive deep into the docs of the Webpack. But certainly after diving deep into the docs, you can customize everything. You want tree shaking to happen, you don't want it to happen. You want some custom plugins to happen, you don't want it to happen. Everything is customizable. They have huge, not only huge, I would say they have the highest plugin ecosystem. And you will see they are being used in industry standard for React Angular. Chances are high that if you are going to work in any company which built the project like two, three years ago, five years ago, and they're still in the business, they are using Webpack. That is that big. Uh, yes, there is a steep learning curve you have to go through with the documentation. They call it as configuration hell as well. But it's the knowledge you get at one time and that stays with you forever. It's also slower compared to the most modern one that I'm going to walk you through. It's a bit slower as well. And if you're all worried, if I have to say that, give me that one word which defines the Webpack, I would say it's legacy, legacy compatibility. What does it mean? If your project is worried about the older browser and has been running really long, the chances are high that it's working fine on Webpack and you want to keep it Webpack. Anybody who comes to maintain it will need some Webpack knowledge. Some companies in the early days didn't use any React pre-built modules like Create React app or something. They used to just configure everything from the scratch using the Webpack. So chances are high that you might encounter that piece of code as well. The next one is Parcel. So obviously, uh, JavaScript ecosystem, you can't keep anything just as one. We have thousands of options and Parcel is one of them. Their main highlight or their serving point is the zero configuration build tool. That's their selling point. It's a zero configuration. Uh, but zero configuration also comes with its own pros and cons. So you notice here they have this module app TXX and that's it. It works out of the box. The dev server hot reloading. I have written notes. Of course, they are from their website itself, but uh, I have gathered them so that we can save some time. First of all, Parcel is super beginner friendly. If you are just getting started, I highly recommend to start exploring the Webpack, but maybe you are in a hurry, you just want to deploy some stuff, then Parcel is one of the great options. It doesn't require no, co no configuration at all. It works out of the box. You just plug it in. It does everything for you. All configuration, optimization. It also has built-in HMR, which is hot module replacement. That means you don't have to reload and uh, uh, kind of auto refresh thing. You can do that in Webpack as well, but there's a plugin for it. You have to configure it. Parcel does it automatically for you. This means everything is configured. This means it's very less flexible and it has a smaller community. The project actually peaked at one point of time. After that, I didn't saw much of the attention in the Parcel community or the ecosystem itself. It's still there in production in, in a lot of places and it introduces the concept like lazy uh, dev builds and all of these things. I don't see it much now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't have that community where it's going on, but I don't see it much, to be honest. Then comes the hero. And again, one word, Parcel, quick setup. Within like few minutes, I can make my app up and running with the parcel. 
And now comes up is the hero, which is gaining a lot, lot of popularity, which is ES Build. It is incredibly fast. And sometimes you're going to see 10 to 100 times faster than Webpack. If you look at the Webpack, they actually mention this on their homepage. There's a nice animation. Let me reload this as well. So notice this, ES Build. And compared to the parcel, it's all done. And it is literally that fast. I have tried it. It is actually that good. So the about time... 10 copies of 3JS library. They have mentioned this nicely. And another thing which is good about the ES build, come on, stop it now. I'm going to take the whole of the bar. Anyways, another good thing that I like about the ES build is their docs. So they also didn't shy away from the docs, neither the plugin. They have the concept of plugin. They have the concept of speed as well as everything that you possibly need to read or anything, optimization, source map, everything. They have thorough documentation about what can you do, how you can configure that, what you can remove, what are our best practices that we recommend. Everything is there. So your first builds and everything. And I think once in a while, everybody should try at least to build these things just for fun. <laughs> they, are, they give you the exact raw power and teaches you under the hood what's happening in that. So it's great for dev builds even for production as well, there's no problem. And it is used under the hood. If you have ever used Vite and you think, ah, it's faster than the Create React app, that's the reason. Create React app uses the, the Webpack and this one uses ES build behind the scene. And Bun, oh, that's another story altogether. Uh, again, there are cons as well. It has uh, lower level tools, not for complete framework itself. Uh, like ES build alone is not a framework, not even a full-fledged library that you can use. It always needs some companion to work with that. Its plugin ecosystem is limited. And that's where exactly, again, the keyword highlight is the speed. And this is exactly where the Vite comes in and fulfill the ecosystem. When the ES build and roll up, they combine, they are known as Vite. Of course, it's a standalone product, but it's majorly a combination of ES build and rollup. If you look at the rollup, this is where uh, the JavaScript module bundler uh, compiles small pieces of code into something larger and more complex. So this is there. And once you actually mix them up, then it becomes a whole library that can serve you the entire purpose of uh, tree shaking, bundling, uh, making it production ready, rolling up and everything. It's lightning fast. Now, when I say lightning fast, you already have seen this in the Vite application, how quickly and fastly it generates a React application, Angular application view. And this is all uh, because of the roll-up based production. By the way, there's also one thing rolled down as well. We'll talk about them some in another video, uh, but this is roll-up based. It also follows the minimum configuration, but it doesn't take away those configuration. It says, I will do all configuration for you, but if you want, I have a robust plugin system. I have all the configuration available. You can just inject them and use it. The developer experience so far is just loving. Everybody is loving it. Uh, it also has some cons, uh, not as customizable as Webpack. It is trying to be there in that ecosystem. Almost there, almost there. I think it has already crossed the number of downloads with the ES, uh, with the Webpack. It is already higher, but I think within a few months, it will be all. Uh, when I say newer compared to Webpack, but stable, uh, this, I really mean it. I We have actually pushed this into production many, many times, not just once. And this is, I would say, becoming the new standard uh, for this entire ecosystem. So this is where I wanted to introduce you a little bit. And I highly, highly recommend everybody to try at least all these bundlers and see them and work with them at least build the entire React fresh or some of the JavaScript multiple files using this bundler. This is where you learn behind the scene. And by the way, in case you are still here, uh, go ahead and check out Swella. They are in the description. Excellent, excellent platform. We have been using them and we are still using it uh, in the production, especially for the databases. They're very, very cheap in that. That is it for this video. Hope you have enjoyed this and let's catch up in the next one.